Hello and welcome to another tutorial with MATLAB and Thermodynamics. My name is Manuel Ramsayer and I'm working at the University of Ramsburg Weingarten and in this video I want to show you how to make a 2D plot from a 3D mesh. In the last video we did manage to write a program, a little program, which shows the heat transfer on a profile where you have a given um, velocity and a given diameter and also the length of the profile was given and this generated you a 3D mesh. In this 3D mesh I will just simply show that once, once again. That was something like that. Well, here it is. And this was quite nice. You can rotate it, look at it, but now we want to maybe select a certain diameter and this certain diameter should then be set as fixed and I want to see the heat transfer depending on the length on that certain diameter. As we know this will be a linear function and it's not very spectacular but just for you to see how it will be look, look like um, because there are different options where you really do use uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, now let's don't make, uh, may waste much time on the introduction. Let's get right into it. We want to plot a 2D plot. So we know that we want to plot something. Now, if I have a plot and I want a, a 2D plot, normally the help should plop out. Well, um, maybe we name the section first, 2D plot with 3D mesh. Now plot here, here it is. You have an X and an Y axis where you can plot elements. And for that, you have to look at your variables. So we look at Q. We have 100 elements here, so we know that the columns are the diameters. If you just look here as we defined them, um, here, the i equals 1 with delta d to 12. The delta d wasn't there in the last video. It's not necessary. It was just to parameterize uh, the step size. We put it just like 1, 1, 10. So we have, and that's important, we have the millimeters. The millimeters uh, in our DI starting from 1 millimeter and going to 10 millimeters because that corresponds to column numbers. If you have 0 0.1 in here as a step size, you have 111. Um, Row, uh, columns and for those columns you cannot uh, it's it's more difficult if, to define to find the right column if a user inputs a certain diameter so for the matter of simplification we just put in here 1 1 10 means a vector starting from 1 ending at 10 and go from there but we know that q is um, built up this way that the diameters are in the columns and the length of the profile is in the length. You can also check that by looking at the length. Length is varying in the rows and the diameter is varying in the columns. Okay, so let's just run that again. Okay, now that has an error for, for sure. Okay. This should not happen. Um, it has an error in the ILQ. Data dimensions must agree. And I think we just have to quickly look at it. 1 to 10, 1 to 10 for the I. And L is equally 1 to 10, 1 to 10. So it should, it should work. Let's see. Mesh the ILQ. Q is not uh, right, right? 
10 times 111 k q is bigger than all of the others okay it should not be q e i uh, q e j is alpha e i j i j i j and this is set from aha uh -huh, the i max and the i max is number of elements of the i okay let's just quickly look at that number of elements is 10 i think yeah okay 10 okay okay from 1 to 10 from 1 to 10 it should not be more than ah now i know that what we forgot in the last tutorials is that you st should always start your material, uh, your your program with the so-called clear um, commands. Yeah, you could even clear all because the va the value for Q is stored until it's overwritten. And if you defined Q as a 10 by 111 matrix, then the problem is that in the next case you run with a smaller matrix, the other values don't disappear automatically. So you have to clear it all at the beginning of the program. All right, that's very important. Now it should run and yeah, there you have it. A coarser mesh than the fine mesh, but now the columns in Q, as you see here, relate to the diameters in millimeters. So here, is the heat transfer with three millimeters as the inner pipe diameter and the length of one meter, two meter, three meter, and so on. Okay, now we want to select a certain column and put all the values of the different rows. How we are gonna do that? First, we want to show or look at how the index and the indices are set in here in MATLAB. So one comma three points to which one comma three first row third column okay so the first index is always the row index and why we, we want and um, because we want to set a certain diameter the uh, the rows must be everything so we want to fix a column but not a row so we do that like this q double dot comma one meaning all the column uh, all the rows of column one if you compare that here and here you will see that's the same okay just keep that in mind because now we are implementing it we use the plot uh, command and now we want to plot the x values in this case this is the length and the length um, they are above all all rows and now the column must be deselected I use the i as a variable and the y values in this case is q uh, from double dot comma the i okay that's what we want to plot and for the for the i we have to specify something in this case i would say we make an input window input and here entering in string the i in millimeters for to the plot make a double dot in here as well and a few empty spaces okay and now we can change uh, x label and y label for example this, this would be the length length of the profile meters and y label would be the heat transfer and watts. OK, 
Okay, that should be it. Now let's make a test run. You have the surface plot somewhere. Let's consider we slice it at a diameter of six millimeters. Yeah, should be a linear function function starting at almost zero and ending at what would you say 500 600 700 something on this area so you see here align the i in millimeters for 2d plot in this case we will say six and then you have exactly what we were expecting starting a linear a linear function starting at almost zero and ending about six seven eight hundred depending on the length of the profile in meters. All right, that concludes this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will see how to make a GUI with guide and just to implement the basic functionality to communi communicate with the user. Thanks for watching and have a